second lap, and the van wall holds off the Ferrari trio of Collins, Jean de Pierre, and Hawthorne. Second time round at Stavolo, Collins gets the overheated Ferrari ahead of Brooks. Hawthorne moves up in support of his teammate. Down to La Source, the van wall gaining ground. Up the Eau Rouge rise, it's still Collins. Brooks clips the corner in his efforts to hold on. Hawthorne steers a wider course. La Source for the third time, and Brooks takes Collins on the inside of the exit from the corner. The green car goes in front, with four Ferraris flying after it. Brooks, Collins, Hawthorne set out upon their fourth lap, racing on their own. Let the chips fly where they may. Fifteen laps are gone, and Brooks has 40 seconds lead on Hawthorne. But Mike now finds his form again, and really starts to motor race, but too late to catch the van wall. So the Grand Prix du Rop runs out. The photographers gather to record another van wall win as Brooks goes by to start his final lap. Now, surely, nothing lies between Tony Brooks and his first Grand Prix Pro win, and the van wall driver presses on, drifting like a dream. Mr. Van der Velde is with him all the way. Down to La Source for the last time, and the gearbox tightens up. But to the line he comes to take the checkered flag for the fastest and the shortest Grand Prix of 1958. Now Hawthorne comes down in a storming spectacular finish, his last lap a record at 132.36 miles an hour to burst his motor almost on the line. Shell tours in a lap behind. And Jardimier too. Lewis Evans coasts over the line to finish third, but to join the swiftly growing breakers yard with broken front suspension. Tony Brooks accepts his trophy from Royal Hands. Mike Hawthorne, too, receives a word of appreciation. And the Belgian driver, Jean de Bien, who has so well upheld his country's honor. A triumphant Tony enjoys his hour of victory helped along by Hawthorne. And let us not forget the man who made the car that won. V is for Vanderbilt, as well as victory.